of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. The colic for the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Lord God, our Redeemer, who heard the cry of your people and sent your servant Moses to lead them out of slavery, free us from the tyranny of sin and death, and by the leading of your Spirit, bring us to our promised land. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first letter. A reading from the first letter to the Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians 2, 1 to 8. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to us now. Thanks be to God. Our hymn is Hear, O my Lord, I See Thee Face to Face, <clears throat> an Anglican traditional communion song. <clears throat>
The Lord be with you. And also and with you. With you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the Spirit calls him the Lord, saying, the Lord said, My Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer. Nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him more questions. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Max Lacuto wrote a children's story animated by Liz Bonham about a lamb who was born that was different. This lamb had black spots, black feet, and sad eyes, unlike all the other sheep. This lamb also had a limp from an injured leg. Consequently, the little lamb was often left out of games played by the other lambs and could not run and jump like all of her friends. In fact, the only real friend that this lamb had was a sedentary old cow that was content to graze and walk slowly and keep this little lost lamb company. The lamb was also more vulnerable to predators and unable to flee quickly and unable to access the better grazing grounds that sometimes require travels to a farm. When the other sheep would go on long journeys looking for better grass, this little lamb was left behind. Now, there were other comforts that compensated for these deprivations. The cow and the lamb would spend quiet evenings together, gazing up at stars and the beauty and wonder of the night sky. When they were tired and hungry, the shepherds would often let them feed and sleep indoors in the comfy stable. And on one night on such occasion, when they shared the stable together, a visiting family, the mother of which gave birth to a newborn child. There seemed to be lots of festivities on this occasion. The shepherds were rejoicing and celebrating. They heard singing and the stars seemed to shine all the brighter and give off a great light. It caused the little lamb to reflect upon his own birth and the meaning of his own life. He realized that while other more able-bodied lambs were able to set off on adventures of their own and other distractions, 
There was still joy and meaning in staying put, staying indoors, and staying home. This season of our lives has been one of staying put, staying indoors, and staying home. There are times when we are sorely in need of making huge adjustments to this new way of being and living. But that's not the only thing, is it? I mean, there are many other things in times in life that challenge us, where we realize that we are sorely in need of help in order to face life's challenges. But I am not sure very often that we ever do anything about it. I don't know how willing we are at times to listen to that voice, that little whisper deep inside that says to us occasionally, I don't know if we're coping well with this particular challenge and especially to face that moment where we realize and acknowledge that we need help. Do we have a friend like that little lost lamb and the mothering and nurturing cow, or the shepherds that allowed them to stay in the stable when they were hungry and tired, unlike the other sheep? Who do we turn to for assistance? In today's Gospel reading, when asked what were the greatest commandments, Jesus answered simply and profoundly, to love God and to love our neighbor. Now, this sounds wonderful. I mean, it's the sort of thing we would expect. It's the great summary of the law that we're all used to. Love God and love your neighbor. That kind of about sums it all up. But as beautiful as this expression sounds, there are times, if we are honest and search deep within, that it simply serves to remind us of our failure to be able to achieve it. The truth is, is that it is often impossible to love neighbor and to be open to the help and assistance of God in the way that we would like. We don't always, do we, live up to our ideal selves and love God and neighbor the way that we would hope or the way we think, probably, that God and others expect of us. During this time of pandemic, our church has declared that keeping one another safe during this time is the greatest expression of loving neighbor that we can do. In reopening our church to public worship, as you can see and as you are experiencing, we are observing many protocols that really at the heart are designed to show our care for one another. But there are times when it feels both overwhelming and difficult to implement and follow these protocols in their entirety. None of us can do this alone or by ourselves. I, for example, as priest of the parish, have needed and continue to need your help. If we listen to that voice deep within us, we know that we continue to depend upon the friendship and fellowship of our faith community in order to be able to live through this difficult and other difficult and challenging times. But when we do, we know that we can comfortably worship together during a pandemic. If you look back to the first reading that you had before you that Bob read for us, we can see a good example of this kind of trust and dependence in the church of Thessalonica. 
As we can see from this letter, there's a positive expression of a community that prospers and flourishes and grows because they realize the mutual help and benefit that they enjoyed in each other in spite of perhaps individual limitations and deprivations like the little lamb. We can see from this letter that they were assisted and motivated by their faith in God and it is said that their faith in God not only gave them a sense of approval of who they were but it gave them courage and it gave them the gospel the good news of Jesus Christ and then there's a little sentence in there that you might almost miss on your own if you weren't following it closely in spite of the positivity of this letter there's just a little small acknowledgement and expression that even though there was at times great opposition Great opposition. They listened not to their fears, but to the encouraging word of God. Consequently, this willingness to trust in each other and to trust in God and overcome the opposition and their fears enabled them to move beyond acts and preoccupations that were simply self-serving, and self-preoccupied and self-concerned and then in the most wonderful positive statement of the whole letter it says that it enabled them to enter into a relationship with each other of gentleness care nurture and love for one another It is apparent, therefore, from our own lives and from the testimony of Scripture and the good news of the gospel, which the thirst, the church in Thessalonica depended on, that we cannot love neighbor on our own without God's help and our trust in one another. It is an impossible task for the individual to accomplish alone. But God gave us a remedy. It is called the church, the community of faithful people, which expresses this confidence in God and one another. The community of faith is not dependent upon its ability to travel far, or to always be able-bodied, or to conform to one way of living, or being. The community of faith prospers on its ability to listen to that screaming voice that we try to suppress deep within us that constantly reminds us we need help and that we can find it in God and one another. Amen.
people. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the church, especially our diocesan bishop Andrew, our area bishop Priscilla, and our priest, Archdeacon Bill. For the people of Christ Church, Bob Cajun, St. John's Dunsford, and St. Luke's Spirit River. As we seek to know Jesus and make him known, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the Anglican cycle of prayer for the church in Wales, and in the diocesan cycle of prayer for the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the whole people of God, that each one may be a true and faithful servant of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For our families and friends, that the Lord will give them joy and satisfaction in all that they do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in our hearts. And all those who are lonely, hungry, persecuted, ignored, or the sick, especially Fred Holly, Thelma Martin, Darlene Sheehy, Linda Reed, Doreen Lewis, Evie Classic, Doreen Crozier, Myrna, uh, Myrna Moore, Ruth Gray, Pat Thomas, and Georgie McHugh, that the Lord will comfort and sustain them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who grieve, for all who have died, remembering Bernice Hodgson, Carol Vallat, Peggy Moshery, Lois Shewitt, Audrey Price, Ruth and Tammy Shepard, Miriam Newham, Jeff Tomlinson, Bob Morris, and Hap Lafferty. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our country that the Lord will help us to contribute to its true growth and well-being. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the whole human family, that we may live together in justice and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Amen. In our prayer over the gifts and the offering we receive, we give thanks for the gifts of bread and wine that are made with our hands from grain and grapes from nature, which God has blessed and given us and which now we return. We give thanks for those who have made an offering to support the financial work of the church and the expense of ministry. And we give thanks who have made an offering to those who give of themselves and service to the church. God of constant love, you have guided your people in all times and ages May we who offer you our praise today always be deeply conscious to follow where you lead. And we ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We live in heaven, Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to give you thanks and praise, O Lord our God, 
sustainer of the universe. You are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets and their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. Glory to you, you were ever and From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation. Glory to you, But we turn against you and betray your trust. And we turn against one another. Again and again you call us to return. Through the prophets and sages you reveal your righteous law. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, born of a woman, to be our Savior. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. By his death, he opened to us the way of freedom and peace. Glory to you forever and ever. Therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. for his coming as Lord of all the nations. 
We who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the spirit now bring you these gifts. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this offering of your church that we who eat and drink at this holy table may share the divine life of Christ our Lord. Glory to you forever and ever. Pour out your spirit upon the whole earth and make it your new creation. Gather your church together from the ends of the earth into your kingdom, where peace and justice are revealed that we with all your people of every language, race, and nation may share the banquet you have promised. Through Jesus Christ, with Christ, through Christ, and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, creator of all. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior has taught us, let us also pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I am the bread of life which has come down from heaven, says the Lord. Give us this bread forever. I am the vine, you are the branches. May we dwell in him as he lives in us. The gifts of God are for the people of God. Thanks be to God. May this bread we have received be the body of Christ for us. May this wine that we have shared spiritually be his blood. From his body and his blood, may we ever be nurtured, fed, and nourished. Let us pray. God, our guide, you have fed us with bread from heaven as you fed the people of Israel. May we who have been inwardly nourished be ready to follow you all our days. We ask this. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with those whom you love this day and forevermore. Amen. Go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.